we got right now is a situation, Carl, where we are still on pace, even with today's gains, to show you a market that is on track for its third straight week of losses. As you take, as you take a look at the Dow Industrials, the S&P 500, and NASDAQ, we are still higher on the day. But remember, we started off a little bit higher. We'll see if that kind of momentum can continue into the later part of this morning. If you take this in context over the course of the S&P 500 in the last year, one of the things that you'll notice is that we are still trying to get back to some levels that some traders are looking as significant. If you look at the S&P 500 over that time, the Dow, the S&P, and the Nasdaq on a one-week basis, still moving lower to the downside on that one-week basis. However, with the S&P 500 overall, we're still within about 5 or so percent away from record highs. So let's take a look at this because, remember, just here, just a few weeks back, right here we'll show you, it was that record high. And then if you take a look at where we stand now, that move lower is about 5% from those levels here. We are still going to keep a close eye on what's happening up here. 29.44 on the S&P 500 is going to be an area to watch. That's the 50-day moving average, the more medium-term trend line for the overall markets. As we talk about maybe some of the sectors involved, places that we're going to watch with regard to what's happened in the market narrative as of late. If you go all the way back in August, remember the Fed rate decision at the end of July, since then we've seen a decided move towards interest rate sensitive sectors. Real estate investment trusts right now up 3% just so far this month to date. You put in consumer staples and utilities in that mix as well. More defensive, higher dividend paying type sectors are the ones leading the way higher. Meanwhile, financials, we talk about the yield curve. That's been playing out a lot in those bank stocks. As the yield curve starts to flatten out and possibly invert, those bank stocks have taken a huge hit. And then energy stocks as well on global growth concerns. Down 11% just so far this month. Those sectors are key focus as well. On the stock side of things, mega cap, technology, communication services and media stocks have been some of the places investors have been buying on the dips a little bit more aggressively so far this week. If you take a look at this week overall, still, though, Facebook down 2 percent, Amazon down 1 percent. Apple, though, here, a China issue perhaps there playing out more in the Apple shares and Netflix down 3 percent and Alphabet down about 1 percent. Those FANG stocks will continue to be a focus for traders as they see whether or not sentiment returns there. And then we'll end here on an overall check right now of what's happening in certain other parts of the market. The S&P 500 large caps on a one-year basis still handily outperforming the Russell. What we are going to watch right here is this underperformance by small caps. Will it start to exacerbate? That gap between small and large cap stocks has been getting wider as of late. We'll see if that continues today. It may be a risk gauge or risk sentiment or risk barometer for the overall market. So those small cap stocks still, Scott Wapner, a huge focus for traders today.